Good morning. Video five of the series on exercise is a powerful medicine. Uh, today, uh, the tape on message number four is the following. Exercise powerfully reduce insulin levels and improves insulin sensitivity that, as I'm going to show you, is a master regulator of aging and cancer. So this is the take home message. Then if you want to understand more, let me show you the data. In the previous, in the previous video, uh, I told you about the results of uh, our study, the randomized uh, calorie phase one trial, where with uh, uh, endurance exercise comprising uh, one hour of exercise per day, six days per week at 70% of maximal heart rate was able to reduce body weight by 8% with a 70% reduction in visceral fat. Visceral fat is uh, a major producer of pro-inflammatory and other adipokines that is causing insulin resistance. Now, in this study that we published in American Journal of Clinic Nutrition in 2006, we see that several markers of insulin sensitivity are highly improved by both calorie restriction in blue and uh, exercise in red. But as you can see here, a couple of markers, it becomes very technical, but uh, this is the Matsuda, Matsuda index, insulin sensitivity index, and this is the insulin area under the curve are, are more improved by endurance exercise than calorie restriction, even if they have a similar body weight. If we look at the fasting insulin, exercise and insulin are similar, but then if you look after a challenge with the glucose load, exercise is more powerful. And I'm going to explain you in the next video why it is, why, it is, why exercise in terms of insulin sensitivity is more powerful than uh, diet. Now, if we look graphically what how we acquired this data, basically these are the results of a, on a OGTT. OGTT means oral glucose tolerance test, how you do it. So you can go to your doctor and ask him to measure, uh, to do a test, again called OGTT, where you measure your glucose and insulin at fasting, after overnight fasting, as you can see here, zero time. And then you drink uh, a 75 gram of glucose beverage. Beverage contains 75 gram of glucose. And then you follow, you, you do a blood draw at 30 minutes, 60, 120, uh, 90 and 120. Why? Because you want to follow the, uh, the glycemic response and insulinemic response after this standardized uh, glucose load. As expected, you know, this is a baseline. Uh, after you, 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 you drink the 75 gram of glucose, your glucose goes up and then comes down at two, minutes, two, two hours. This is again before starting the 12 months exercise. And this is after 12 months of exercise and 70% visual fat loss. You see, there is a major improvement in all the points and most importantly of the area under the curve for glucose, but also for insulin, major reduction in insulin means you, less, you need less insulin at any point to keep your glucose much lower. So you are more insulin sensitive. Again, less insulin secreted by the beta cells to achieve lower level of glucose in your bloodstream uh, in response to a glucose load. So this is an improvement in insulin sensitivity. Uh, this is a year study. This is another study where in, uh, in, in, in people with mild diabetes, type two diabetes, after only one week of endurance exercise training, you have a significant 
improvement in, uh, as you can see, in glucose tolerance, so the, the, the glucose levels at 60, 90, and 120 minutes were significantly lower after seven days of exercise only, and also insulin, as you can see here, are much lower. So you, you you know these people they they needed much less insulin to keep their glucose lower. So they were more insulin more insulin sensitive only after one week. So the message is that the effects are pretty quick. So if you start to exercise, you have quick improvements that become more and more uh, effective and strong as you keep exercising and as you keep lowering your uh, visceral fat and all the dysfunctional adipokines and other factors that I'm going to tell you in the next videos. Now, why it is important? Why it is important to lower your circulating insulin both in the fasting state and after you eat something? Because as as an again, as you eat a meal or you drink something, you have an increase in this glucose and insulin. The importance of lowering insulin is because whenever your insulin and IGF-1, they are binding to the insulin and IGF-1 receptors that are present in all your cells, including the cancer cells, you are activating this pathway called PI3 AKT FOXO pathway. So the lower the insulin, and IGF-1, we're going to discuss about how to regulate IGF-1 in other videos, the lower your insulin, the lower the activation of the PI3 AKT pathway and the higher the FOXO translocation to the nucleus, to the DNA. When FOXO gets activated by lower insulin because again, you lower the insulin concentration in your plasma and therefore the binding to the receptors, you have higher FOXO. When you have higher FOXO, you increase autophagy so the cleaning of the cells, the removal of dysfunctional organelles and old and toxic proteins within your cells, you increase the capacity of your cell to repair DNA damage. You increase the antioxidant response within your cells by increasing SO2 and catalase and other enzymes, and you inhibit cell proliferation through inhibition of cycling D1, 2, and 3 by 13 folds in these experiments in humans. Okay, so less cell proliferation, less random mutations, less cell senescence, less cancer. Indeed, uh, and, and, and we know that this is true because uh, uh, we, as a community, as a scientific community, we performed a lot of experiments in different model organisms from yeast, worm, flies, to different type of mammals. And we see that whenever we downregulate, whenever we inhibit the insulin IGF-1 pathway through uh, dietary and pharmacological and genetic interventions, we extend health span and life span in multiple modern organisms as we have illustrated in this review article that we wrote for science. Now, not only that, you know, not only we are slowing the accumulation of damage by increasing autophagy, DNA repair, reducing cell proliferation, increasing apoptosis and, uh, and, uh, and antioxidant pathways, but Whenever you have elevated insulin levels because you have excess abdominal fat and you don't, you don't exercise and, no, and therefore you are insulin resistant, you are causing again compensatory hyperinsulinemia that I'm gonna explain you in another video why it happens. But these increased insulin levels and this insulin resistance in the liver, in your liver is causing a reduction of key transporters called sterhormone binding globulin and IGF BP1 and BP2 that are increasing the viability of IGF1 testosterone estrogens that are major drivers with inflammation and insulin hyperinsulinemia of cell proliferation uh, and 
and they are impairing the capacity to repair DNA, uh, apoptosis, and there are increasing genomic instability and random mutations that are increasing your risk of developing cancer, but most importantly, they're also increasing your risk of having a second cancer after you have been treated with surgery and drugs because you had, you had colon cancer, breast cancer, prostate cancer, endometrial cancer, and many other obesity-related cancers. So the message is that reducing insulin, improving insulin sensitivity through exercise, and I'm gonna, as I'm gonna explain in other videos, through diet, the combination of exercise and diet that you can measure you know, by, by measuring the insulin fasting and postprandial insulin, if you can lower this insulin and you can monitor lower insulin levels, you know that you are gonna impact your risk of having a second, a first cancer and a second cancer and a recurrence because again, you are impacting all these metabolic molecular pathways. So if, you had cancer and you have been successfully treated with surgery and drugs, be careful to try to optimize your metabolic hormonal profile by acting on these multiple molecular pathways by improving insulin sensitivity and other biomarkers because this is going to reduce your risk of having a recurrence and metastasis and other cancer, second cancer, as it has been described in many publications. Okay, for today um, is enough. If you want to understand more, if you are a scientist or a doctor and you want to have more knowledge about these pathways and how they work from a mechanistic point of view, you can read a couple of review articles that I wrote. Uh, one recent published in Nature Reviews Molecular Cell Biology in 2021, with uh, Cara Green and Dudley Lamming uh, describing these pathways. And, and, uh, and uh, this is the, uh, the, the second most uh, important uh, journal, uh, international scientific journals with an impact factor of 94. And then there is this older, uh, but still very relevant review article that uh, we published in Science in 2010 describing how these uh, insulin IGF-1, insulin sensitivity and TOR pathway is very important for aging across multi multiple modern organisms. If you are not an expert and a technician, so a scientist, you can read a couple of books uh, that I wrote that are summarizing in a less technical, uh, with a less technical wording, some of these concepts. Uh, there is this book in Italian called The Grande Via that is a kind of old, you know, it's, it has like five, four or five years old. And then there is this recent, I uh, wrote last year, the called The Path to Longevity, where again, I summarize how different lifestyles are impacting me mechanistically into these uh, aging pathways. And finally, if you want to follow me, uh, I have a YouTube uh, uh, channel. This is one of the video of my YouTube channel. Uh, uh, so you have just to uh, go on, on YouTube, uh, write Luigi Fontana, you're gonna get you know, my, my, my YouTube channel. And then you, if you press on one of my videos, you can hit subscribe you press subscribe here and therefore you're going to receive a, a notice for any new video that i'm going to publish on the youtube channel so you can be updated and then follow me and be notified if i post a new video anyway uh, that's it for today thank you for listening and uh, we'll see you soon we'll see each other very soon bye